And this is Ms. Wiles, and this is Division of Polynomials, Part 2, two more examples. Um, in this example, we've already uh, set up the division. Um, so if you've got this handout, go ahead and pause the video, write this stuff down. If not, let's keep on going. Now, um, what I would like for you to do on some of the other ones is to try it. Get as far as you can and then come back into the video and check yourself and things like that. Okay, so our focal point is this Q. The Q is going to help us decide what goes, how many times this quantity, this Q plus 7, will divide into our big polynomial that we have. So Q will go into negative 7 Q cubed, negative 7 Q squared times. Because 1 goes into negative 7, negative 7 times, and Q goes into Q cubed, Q squared times. Because Q cubed is Q times Q times Q. And so when you divide it by Q, you take one of those Qs away and you're left with two Qs. Now we need to multiply negative 7 Q squared times Q plus 7 to determine what goes right here on top of this line. Negative 7 Q squared times Q is negative 7 Q cubed. Couldn't they have chosen another variable? And then negative 7 times or negative 7 Q squared times 7 is negative 49 Q squared. We need to subtract all of that from the quantity above. Negative 7 Q cubes cancel out because we're subtracting those. Negative 45 minus negative 49 is 4. So now we have 4 Q squared. And it's time for us to bring down the plus 28Q. So we bring down that plus 28Q as we continue on the problem. Now we look at the Q. We're still looking at this Q. How many times will this Q go into the 4Q squared? That's what's going to tell us what to put up there next. And that's going to be plus 4Q. We've determined what should go next in our answer. We must multiply 4Q <coughs> times Q plus 7. When we do that, we have 4Q squared, and then 4Q times 7 is plus 28Q. At this point, we're subtracting all of that from what's above it, and you should recognize by now that if you are subtracting the exact same thing, they will cancel out, and you will have a remainder of zero. When you have a remainder of zero, there will be no fraction on the end of your answer. Your answer is negative 7Q squared plus 4Q. In our second example of the second video, we are dividing negative 10P squared plus 80P plus 1 by P minus 8. Again, our focal point here that helps us decide what goes up top is the P. How many times will P go into negative 2P squared or negative 10P squared? And that should be negative 10P times. We multiply negative 10P times the P minus 8 for a negative 10P squared plus 80 because negative 10p times negative 8 is positive 80p. When we subtract all of this, we end up with nothing. But the one says, hey, don't forget about me. I'm still up here. So the zero is not our remainder because we still have this one that's hanging out up there. And so now we have this one that we need to deal with. But P won't go into 1, so it becomes our remainder. The remainder is our 1, and so we do plus 1 over P minus 8 for an answer of negative 10P plus 1 over P minus 8. And that's all I have to say about that.